Hello, this is Jonathan Gardner. We are going over theory of Python, and in this lecture, I wanted to talk about something that you can do in Python that isn't completely obvious to beginners, and it especially isn't obvious to people coming from a C, C++, or Java background, okay? And this is nesting functions, and the idea of nesting functions is you can actually define functions within functions, okay? Why do people do this? Uh, you might have heard of something called partial functions, so you might want to create a function that partially fills in some of the parameters and then when the additional parameters come in, it actually gives you the result. Uh, you have various situations in Python where you need to actually create functions, return them as a result of a function. And also, typically, typically this arises when you have decorators. Okay, so uh, as a brief overview of what we're going to cover here, we're going to cover uh, very quickly how functions work in Python, at least the basic syntax that I've given you already. I'll give you a brief over your introduction to how nested functions would work. We will talk a little bit about the non-local statement, a little bit about frames and environments. And finally, we're going to go over um, decorators, how decorators work. We're going to give you some use cases and give you some contrived examples that will help you start thinking about decorators. All right. So first, uh, a review of functions. Okay. Remember that we didn't cover everything about Python functions. We left a lot of details out. Um, we basically had, uh, you have def and you have the function name and then you have a parameter list and then you can specify the function body, right? That's basically how you define a function. The body of the function is executed when the function is called with a new namespace that I'm going to use this yellow sticky to represent, right? So every time you call a function, you create a new namespace for the local scope of that function and that code is executed accessing the variables from that namespace. And when the code runs out or when it hits a return statement, then it returns the return value of the function, which if the code runs out, the return value is just none. Okay. And we ha when we call a function, so when we call a function, we'll, we'll just basically call the function, do a parenthesis, and then pass in some values for the parameters. And this is going to assign the parameter names to those values that you passed in, create a frame, put that frame on top of the stack, and then execute the function in that frame, in that uh, new local namespace, okay? Note that when you're defining a function, it's actually declaring or assigning that function to a variable of the same name, okay? That's a pretty important point. This is kind of why this whole, this is the reason why it all works, and that's something you need to remember. Uh, many, many languages like Java and C++, what they do is there's a phase where they go through the program, they compile, they look for functions, and they set aside some resources for that function. They basically pre-compile that function. And when you go to call the function, it doesn't look at the variable namespace. It looks at the table of functions that's set aside in the program that's been compiled. Python does not do it that way. Python is looking at variables. You're calling into those variables with the parameters, and it doesn't have a special function namespace like the languages, uh, other languages do. All right. Uh, oh, if you have the wrong uh, types or you have the wrong number of uh, parameters, it's going to raise a type error. You've probably seen this already if you've been playing with Python, which um, I highly encourage you to keep playing with the interpreter so that you get familiar with what happens. You need to be able to predict what code will do when you look at it. And the only way to do that is just to practice, just like riding a bicycle, right? The more you ride the bicycle, the more you can anticipate what's going to happen when various situations arise and then take corrective action before it happens. All right, nested functions. So, Keeping in mind that the function is a statement, just like any other statement in Python. It assigns something, the function, to a variable. That's all it does. It's, it's basically similar to the assign statement, except the thing on the right-hand side is a function itself. Um, now, let's talk about how this works. So I'm going to give you an example here. We're going to write a function called def incrementer. Okay. An incrementer doesn't take any parameters. Okay. In the function body, we're going to have a equals zero. Okay. And then I'm going to have def inc. Okay. I'm going to leave a space here. I'll tell you why later. I'm going to say a is equal to a plus one. And we're going to return that new value of a. And then the incrementer function is going to return the contents of the inc variable, which is that function we've just defined. Okay, all right. So what's going on here when you call incrementer? So let's go ahead and have some sample code down here. We're gonna say incrementer. 
okay? This is going to call this function with a new namespace that's empty, that's blank, all right? It actually reserves a spot for A because it sees that in this function there is an assigned statement for the variable A. It also reserves a spot for ink, so we have A and we have ink reserved. They're not set yet when the function first starts. And as it executes, it first says A is zero, right? That's the sign statement there. And then it says, oh, look, you're creating the function here, and we're going to assign this to that function that we've just defined here, okay? And then it returns that, okay? So when you just call the incrementer, it's going to create a function and return it, okay? Now, this frame, typically when you call a function, this frame is thrown away. It's garbage collected. It's no longer useful. But in this case, this ink function is part of this namespace and actually references the namespace, and so we're going to hold on to this. Okay, so this function that's returned. So if we remember the ink function, so we're going to say ink is equal to incrementer. Now this ink variable that's in the global namespace is going to reference a function that is defined in this namespace. So this namespace continues to exist. And when we call ink, okay, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to create a new namespace. Okay. And Python knows that in this namespace, we're assigning to a variable A, so it reserves a spot for A, okay? And when we call A equals A plus one, it first looks up the value of A, it sees the A that's supposed to be declared locally, and it's gonna give you an unbound local error, I think it's called. Uh, yep, yeah, unbound local error. Uh, okay, and this is what happens when you make this mistake. Now, how do we fix this? Well, it used to be in previous versions of Python, we had to do a rather strange trick to fix this, but nowadays with Python 3.7, we can write this statement, non-local A, okay? And what non-local A does is it tells Python when it calls this ink function, it says the A here is actually the same as that A there just like we did with the global statement and global variables, we can do that here. And so when it says A equals A plus one, well, it says, what's A? It looks up in that namespace, it says A is zero, so A plus one is one, and so now it's gonna assign to A the value one, all right? And then it returns the value of A, which is one, so this is going to return one. And then if we call it again, what's it gonna do? Well, it starts off, it says non-local A, so we actually get rid of this namespace because we no longer have the function called, and we create a new namespace, okay, for the new function call, and this one says non-local A as well, so we have A that points up there to that A, and so we say A equals A plus 1, so A plus 1 is 2, so we assign A to 2, now it's worth 2, and we return A, so this one returns 2, and you see how that works. That's how the non-local statement works, this is how nested functions work. There really isn't much to add here. Um, if you have any questions about how this code works, please ask in the comments below. I will help you understand. I will make new videos if I need to, to make this concept very crystal clear. It's very important. Okay. Now, before we move on, I'm going to tell you why we don't do nested functions. Uh, one is it's difficult to test. In such a trivial example as this, it's pretty clear how you would test this function. You would call the incrementer, get back something, and check that it actually increments, right? But if you, if you had more complicated code in here, or the surrounding code was more complicated, or there was a very complicated interface between the two namespaces, then testing becomes very difficult. It's much better, if you can, to avoid nested functions because they're easier to test if they're not nested. Um, also, it's confusing. So even intermediate Python programmers, they sometimes have problems with nested functions. So if you have the choice to avoid using a nested function, please take it because you don't want to confuse people, okay? And there is lots of uh, mechanisms that exist. There's lots of, what is it called? Uh, batteries included. It's one of the phrases of Python, batteries included. And what that means is that Python already has several functions and features in place that makes writing these functions that generate function pretty much unnecessary. And we'll cover those when we go over functional programming in the future, okay? Now, why should we? Why do we do this? When do you typically see us doing nested functions? The answer is basically decorators. It's only decorators. That's typically the only time we actually 
do nested functions. So in the next part of this lecture, we're going to go over decorators and how they work and why they're important. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.